Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Harika. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about pick activity and also I'm going to cover these parts of the topic. Um, so firstly, I'll explain you what is pick activity and what is pick branch activity. And I'm going to talk about how we can, uh, you know, use triggers and actions and what are they basically and how exactly it functions, like the exact functionality of it and what's the purpose of using this activity and everything using a demo so uh, these are all the things that i'm going to cover up throughout this video so by end of the video you will get a very good understanding of the pick activity and also how you can save the time um, by using this particular activity because this is something we come across in most of the uh, automations so I definitely believe this will help you to save a lot of time in your automations. So first of all, let's get into the video and see how, what is a pick activity. So basically, um, let me just show you. Um, I've already created a workflow here, um, but I can just explain you through the workflow and show you what it actually does because it's a very simple workflow. There's no uh, uh, need to actually recreate the workflow. So I can actually, you can actually pick uh, this particular activity from here. So this particular activity, uh, whenever you just pull it into your workflow, let me just show you, it just appears in this way. So this is a simple activity and it needs some branches inside it in order to perform. So to do that, we are actually pulling the pick branch. So this is a pick branch. So it just means a particular branch or a sequence of activities. Okay. So uh, what is there inside this pick branch is a trigger and action. So what is trigger? And what is action? So let's say if uh, you uh, have a particular set of activities inside the trigger and if all the activities uh, are true, then the uh, action activities, the set of activities inside the action block will be executed. So that's the, um, you know, uh, highlight point of pick, pick branch. So let me just show you how this actually works. So... This is a functionality basically. So let's say if you have multiple big branches. Okay, like this, if you have it, uh, you have multiple triggers, right? So all the triggers will be executed simultaneously. Okay, and whichever the triggers output is true, that action block will be executed and the left will be ignored. So that's the uh, functionality of it. So now uh, I am going to take a small use case, small demo, and I will show you how this fu uh, actually functions with the example so that you can understand it. Okay. Um, so I have explained you these three parts, right? So let's uh, understand the purpose of it also. So why exactly we have to use this? Because whenever we learn some activities, if we don't know the purpose, we can't use them right way. So let's see. I have, uh, I'll just comment this out. And you know, I'll just run this. Okay, I'm opening the flip card side. Okay, so here, if you see, I'm having this particular site, right? So, whenever I open this site, there are some um, things that I have to check. So, firstly, I have to see whether the user is already logged in or not. Okay, so that is dependent on this button. And sometimes when I open the site, as soon as I open it, it will show me this pop-up, okay? So whenever this pop-up is there, I have to directly enter the credentials and I can click on login. I don't have to actually click on this button, which is not possible in that case, right? So there are three different scenarios in this. Um, so firstly, I have to check whether the uh, pop-up is appearing or not. If the pop-up is not appearing, I have to click on login button and I have to log in. If uh, in, in not either of these two cases, uh, the, uh, the user might already been logged in into the particular website. So login is basically the common um, um, 
functionality or you know module that we encounter in any type of automations in any type of web application ui automations right so in that case um, this will be very much useful so if you see here i have created a workflow in such a way that um it will be having different branches right so the first branch will be it will be checking for the pop-up so if you see here i have a uh, something called as pop-up and in the second branch i have something i'm checking for login if the pop-up is not there i'm checking for login and why i have kept the delay here so we all know then uh, that whenever the web page loads it will take some time for the pop-up to appear so meanwhile if the bot is considering the pop-up is not there and is trying to click the login but if the pop-up appears after one or two seconds, then definitely that uh, is taking a wrong path, right? So that's why I just kept a delay so that it will wait for the pop-up if at all, if it's there. So just a one second or two second delay that I kept here. And uh, the next thing is if the user is already logged in, it will be appearing as my account. So these are the three different scenarios I have used. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just clicking on continue. So in this case, what it has to show, it has to show that the pop-up is there. So just click on continue. So pop-up appeared, right? So the execution has ended. Now, um, you have understood the functionality of it, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this in the debug mode and I'm going to show you how it actually uh, executes in different scenarios, okay? So let me just go one by one. Before that, I'll just close this off and debug. So the uh, website has opened and now if you see here, we don't have a pop-up and it directly has a login button. So just click on step into, as I mentioned you, all the triggers will be executed. As it has a delay, it will go into the next trigger, which is it is checking for my account. Okay. So after checking that, it will come back and check for the login. Okay. Because none of them were true. You, you can also check it here uh, in the watch I have kept. So it is shown, shown as false, right? So none of them were true and the login is true and now we are going to see it is exiting this particular element uh, uh, triggers okay so it is exiting from that and it is going into this particular action right because this is true so it's going to this particular action and it is entering no pop-up can click on login and enter into site right so this is perfect and now uh, let's take one more scenario and see how the bot actually works okay so we have exited and now i am going to debug this and in this case we are going to see how um this particular uh, thing up, like, works as if uh, if the pop-up is appearing okay so for the pop-up to appear i have to click on this or sometimes it will appear by itself okay so it has to come to the peak then i can just do that i think i haven't closed the site let me just do that because it's getting confused with the older one or something um let me just debug the file okay we are good um now what i'm going to do i'm going to click on this button so that the pop-up appears and once after that's happening so uh, it will execute all the so if you see this this particular pop-up uh thing is true but still it's going to execute these things right because the point is it will execute everything simultaneously and now it has exited from all the triggers and it will come over here, this particular action, because that value is true. Correct? So the pop-up appeared and it will exit from the whole workflow. That's it. So now let's check the last scenario. Uh, let me just pause the screen for a while uh, as I log in into the application. Because I have some confidential data, right? So...
so i'm entering the password and getting inside the okay i'm inside uh, my account so if you see i have my account so now the user will come inside and he will be uh, saying that my account is there and it has already logged in so let's just check that particular portion i'm going to debug the file and now i will see right it is in my account so now i will hit on step into it is exiting from all the triggers and it has to provide already login so this is perfect right so let's say if there is a scenario uh, in the same scenario if you wanted to do uh, if condition okay if the element exists perform this if not this if not this in that case just assume if it is taking by default 30 seconds right we will be setting something around 4 to 5 seconds for each element exists to check if that element is available or not so in that case um, if this is not available for each transaction or for any every time you log in into the application so every time you have to just uh, check uh, all these three right so definitely if one is true other two are false in an uh, in a complete negative scenario uh, you will be wasting around like 8 seconds or 12 seconds right so in order to avoid that we will be using this particular activity where everything will be uh, you know, working simultaneously, checking simultaneously. And if one is true, all other will be ignored. So by this way, you can, uh, you know, save a lot of time on a whole automation. So I think uh, you found this um, complete activity and its functionality useful. If so, please do let me know in the comments. And also I will be making a video on the difference between pick and parallel activities uh, in the next uh, like in, in the next video would be on it and if you wanted to learn more about UiPath and the videos on it uh, just do subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification button so that you will get the video as soon as I upload it thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video